Next question is from Rosa Steph. How do you know when you should become a personal trainer? What makes you fit to become a personal trainer? You know, I wrote an article on a blog article on this right here. In fact, I'll, I'll make sure that we link it in the in the show notes. Um, and I wrote the article because there's a lot of people who uh, recently I've gotten a lot of inf- a lot of messages from people who are asking questions like this one. Personal training is a a if you were to place jobs or careers into categories, there would be a category of passion driven careers. Um, artist, musician, you know, chef, you know, personal trainers, right there. If you have a deep passion for it, you're going to be do okay. If you don't, don't become a personal trainer because the money's not going to motivate you. The job is not easy. It's not like going to do the job and be like, oh my god, I love hearing people complain about their problems, <laughs> and I love people not doing what I tell them to do, yeah. and I love hearing the same, you know. It's it's a it's one of those jobs that you love only if you're passionate about helping people through health. You got to be a people person. If you don't l- have a passion for helping people through health and fitness, it, you won't last. And I've I've had many many trainers. You could tell why they got the job. Oh, I want to be a trainer because oh the schedule seems flexible and it seems like a you know. So I, I heard trainers make a lot per hour. And I'm like you're not gonna make it. I I feel like that's hard to t- say though because I also feel like I I fell in love with personal training and and became passionate about it. Like it was kind of like this, to be honest, it was a, oh, it'd be kind of a cool job to do while I finished my degree. It was like that. I really thought I was going to go down the physical therapist path and, and that direction. And uh, I actually didn't even know that you can make any money being a personal trainer and yeah. thought, oh, that's, and then when I found out you could, I was like, oh, that'd be kind of a cool job to do while I'm going to school for this. And I really fell in love with it. I really fell in love with uh, interacting with people and helping other people. And then I also, uh, and today when I think back, some of the things that m- make me so passionate about what we do is is honestly a lot of the accountability on myself. I value health and taking care of myself so much that it's awesome that I, I picked a career that it's you know, obviously, uh, ideal for me to be healthy and fit and in shape if I'm going to be promoting health and fitness. And so for me, that was like where a lot of the the passion later on came from was like, oh, this is, I'm a better person. I'm a better human when I'm healthier and fit and taking care of my body. And because this is where I make my living, um, it holds me accountable to that. And so, you know, it's you know, it's it's hard for me to tell you that you 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 have to have this like deep desire to be. Well, how soon did you feel? Because you still wanted to help people. You want to be a physical therapist. Yeah. But how soon did you feel like passion for it? Like how long did it take you? It, it was pretty quick. It was pretty fast. Like it, it, it. I mean, right away within the first six months, I was already like working six seven days a week, mm-hmm. and even when I wasn't, that to me that I, there was obviously obviously I enjoyed it a lot because. Even when I wasn't getting paid, I was still hanging out at the job. Yeah, same here. You know, and so that to me is like a good sign that you're in the right place. And it, you know, if you find yourself reading articles about you know uh, fitness and and the body and nutrition, like, and you find yourself doing that on off hours because you want to learn or your your interests or curious yourself, that's always a really good sign that that's probably a good passion for you. And I I think that it's not just personal training that falls with anything that you should pursue. Mm-hmm. I think that's just good advice in general. Like, you know, what would you do if you didn't need to work? You know, what? and I, and someone asked me the other day about us in this business and uh, what we're scaling it and potentially could build it to sell it. And and I go, you know, um, of course, uh, d- being smart businessmen, I think we're all structuring it uh, to have the potential to sell if it wanted to at one point. But to be honest, uh, if someone asked me, what would you do if you sold this? And well, I'd want to do this, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I think that's what you should be in search of. And if you can ask yourself, like, would you, you know, and I was helping people like work out even when I wasn't fully certified and I was doing that on my, on my own time. So, you know, I, I don't know. I think that, uh, that's more important if you're, if it's something that you would do, even if you weren't getting paid, that's a good sign. If, if personal training for you, it interests you yeah. that much. Well, you know, when, it, when I do those sales trainings or for trainers, I'll be in a room full of anywhere between 20 to 50 trainers. And first thing I always say is, you know, uh, 
you know, raise your hand and tell me the reasons why you became a personal trainer. And it's, it's all, it's always something that's related to, I love helping people or I love fitness. I almost never had anybody raise their hand and be like, Oh, it's I made it for the money or anything else. It's definitely in the, in the reward, the value. It's, it's almost like talk. You ever talk to a teacher who's been a teacher for a year? Teachers don't make a lot of money. We know this. You ever talk to a teacher who's been a teacher for a long time? And you ask them, why, why are you a teacher? You know, you don't make that much money. What is it? I love helping kids. I love teaching children. It's the same thing. Like the, the reward I used to get from clients coming to me and being like, you've improved, your, your guidance has improved my life. You know and I'm saying? In general terms, it was usually more specific. I would feel so good about that, that you could have paid me almost anything and I would have done it, right. you know? Yeah, I love it. I mean, it's one of those things. Uh, I always loved like PE, for instance, and, and that's one of those where just being physical and being around it and learning uh, more about the human body and all the intricacies, you know, involved with that. Like, it's just a constant place for you to learn and grow. And and so to be able to then, you know, apply that to somebody else on even on a small level where you feel like you're probably not qualified to do it for a long period of time. But like with the little bit that you do know, you can like immediately help somebody. And yeah. I think that's that's the appeal of personal training. It's just like you, you could just jump right in and, you know, as long as you're keeping everything safe and structured, like you can really make a huge impact in somebody's life. You, it's it's one of the most, and people sometimes chuckle when I say this, but I, I'll make the case. It's one of the most exhausting jobs you'll ever do in your entire life. And people think, well, how's, how's it exhausting? You just tell people to work out. Um, you are, when you go to a normal job, you're there, you know, eight hours a day. Uh, when you're personal training eight clients a day, you are on every minute of that eight hours. You are not break with your buddies. You're not, you are on, you're with your client always. The energy that they give off, it goes inside of you, you know? So you have someone comes, it's not like your clients come to your workouts, always ready to work out and feeling great. Oftentimes they come to you and they're stressed out. Yeah. Oftentimes they come to you and they don't want to work out. And my wife did this. My husband did that. My shoulder hurts. I'm not feeling good. This isn't working, Sal. I'm trying to do the nutrition. I fucked up again. You know, I don't know if I should even work out, whatever. All, and that's it all day long. So eight clients in a day. You know what's funny? For personal yeah. training, full time is considered 30 hours. For most big box gyms. 30 hours considered full time. Well, That's because it's exhausting. Well, not only that, and if you're really truly doing uh, six to eight clients in a day, you, that's almost never is that eight straight. It's normally a block of four and a block of four or right. a block of six and a block. Uh, so so you're probably there for 12 hours. Yeah. So you're normally there for a lot longer than a and then a normal eight hour shift in order to uh, see that many clients. Mm -hmm. So no, it's an exhausting job. And to your point, you're right. Like you, you have to be kind of a chameleon. You have to be a people person. Like, those things I think are, are really, as far as the, the education and becoming a great trainer, I mean, that, that takes time. Like, I don't think, uh, mm -hmm. I don't think any of us believe that we were great trainers, uh, within the first year or two. I mean, it took years and years of experience to get really good at personal training. So if you're excited to learn and you're, you're into it, I think that that's important. I think it's important. You, you like people. Um, but as far as, you know, being fit to be a personal trainer, like who, uh, what, what skill sets or how good you are yet, like uh, that, 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 that doesn't matter as much as you your desire to want to be good. Yes, the passion.